<clears throat> Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here on the show, and I'm here to talk about some NBA news. Before I get into that, um, you won't see a happy landing in the Kentucky recap after uh, their game gets Florida when that goes final, because they're getting destroyed right now. But yeah, I'll get to more of that when, they're, when I do that recap. I uh, have the Dodgers game tonight. That's about it. So yeah, um, let's talk about some NBA here. So, a few things I want to talk about. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about uh, this morning that come out, per Woj, is the Detroit Pistons. They have fired Monty Williams after one season. I mean, it shouldn't really come as a shock. I mean, they've dismissed Coach Monty Williams. He leaves with, a, with five years and $65 million plus left on his deal. Uh, the new president, Trajan Langdon, uh, will move to make his coat his own coaching hire, so the new president probably is like, eh, we're going to take Monty Williams out. And I know you can say, oh, scapegoating coaches has to stop, but Monty Williams' season isn't a good coach. And he's getting $65 million to sit at home. I'd say he's just fine. But if you're going to say that, tell me you didn't watch a single Pistons game without telling me you didn't watch a Pistons game. Which I wouldn't blame you if you didn't watch a Pistons game. But he got paid and doesn't have to coach the Pistons anymore. That's a win-win for him. That's a win for him. But Pistons owners probably trying to put that money, trying to burn that money. But I mean, he started Killian Hayes and Livers at time at points over Bagley and Ivy and even Marcus Sasser. And you're telling me that's a good a, a good coach. And he didn't know Ivy could play off the ball. He did zero research, and he put zero effort into the season. The guy literally had his best players pointed out to him through beat writers and social media. Yeah, that that I don't know how you can say, oh, he didn't get a fair sh fair stake. Like he wasn't gonna make this team any better. But he's a t but a two-time coach of the year. Uh, he was lured to Detroit with a massive six-year deal after leaving the Suns. He had initially planned to set out a season while while dealing with his wife's cancer diagnosis. But he took on Pistons' rebuild under Troy, Re Troy Weaver. Now a new front office makes a change and they're going to start another search. Hey, he got that money. So... And the decision to fire him was made at the ownership level. Uh, per Woj, uh, his sources told uh, sources tell ESPN. You know, you absolutely stink as a head coach when the owner is willing to pay you sixty-five million to go away and not work. <laughs> no roster in the NBA is bad enough that they should lose twenty-eight straight, and they lost twenty-eight straight at one point. I don't know who can make that team. Good, but we'll see uh, who their next head coach will be. So, I want to talk about uh, the Warriors here. Gary Payton II has optioned into his $9.1 million player option for next season, sources tell ESPN. By opting into it, he now has, fle has the flexibility to extend with the Warriors this offseason. Eh, I mean, he feels like he, he was injured so much last year. Hopefully he can be healthy this year because he can be a solid play player off our bench. Hopefully he stays healthy because the injuries are really screwing him up. But yeah, that was the first big thing was the Pistons firing Monty Williams. I'm not going over hoops hops or hoops hops what th top 30 players from this 2023-24 season. Who cares? Um, the 2024 NBA playoffs saw a significant decline in viewership compared to 2023. Wow, shocker. Short conference finals, mo probably the most boring NBA finals of all time. Who would have thought? And it, with the ratings dropped by 11% to 2.4 in viewership, by 12% to 4.53 million. Per at Paulson underscore SMW. End quote. Nonetheless, the finals have now gone five years without a single game hitting the 14 million mark. 
I figured that even the World Series has reached more recently, which was Game 6 in 2021. Yeah, I mean, it should, let's just face it. Every, every playoffs right now, it feels more exciting than NBA Finals. Look, I don't even watch hockey. I haven't watched a single game until last night. And it was more exciting than the last few years I've watched the NBA Plus, besides 2022 with the Warriors, where they won a, won a championship. The last, what, two years, the finals, just the playoffs overall have just been boring. And one game I watched of the NHL playoffs of the Stanley Cup last night was more exciting than the whole NBA Plus last two years. And it's actually up to a game six after uh, the Oilers were down 3-0. But the TV product, as well, the, to the TV product that ESPN gives us is horrible. Mid-commentary, it doesn't feel special like it used to. Plus, all these games, they were blowouts. Like, half the games were blowouts. And Doris Burke is not that good, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude, it's just she's not good. Like, she it just doesn't feel she has a chemistry with J.J. Reddick. Like, they had good chemistry with Mike Breen, Mark Jackson, Jeff Van Gundy. And the TNT crew is better than the ESPN crew. Like, come on, man. I mean, yeah, they weren't the best bringing in Draymond. But still. Even a lot of the close series seem to be teams swapping just blowouts back and forth. Like, yeah, ooh, some series were close. Yeah, because some of the games were, f were fucking mixed in with blowouts. And, pu and people probably didn't care to see Boston win at all either. It's just the presentation doesn't help either. But if you think this is bad, yeah, w watch when LeBron, KD, Curry, Kawhi, and all them retire. All the big names you grew up with. And yeah, you can say, oh, they said the same thing with Jordan, but well, you don't have a Michael Jordan nowadays. You don't have that Michael Jordan. But, but, you, but I constantly could have ended with Curry because those, those, I don't know if anybody else will bring in that male viewership. That's just my opinion, though. So the Atlanta Hawks, uh, they've been unable to bring in Alex Sarr for a workout and Donovan Klingon as a real candidate to go number one purge at Draft Express. End quote. The Hawks have been unable to bring Alex Sarr and for a workout to this point, but the door remains open for that to potentially happen. Clean appears to be Richard Shea's main rival at the number one overall pick. And this is big. I don't think Clean at one would be that insane. Because he's a tall, stiff, uh. tall, stiff. I don't know if he's that athletic. He could be like a Walker Kessler type guy. But I don't think it'd be bad insanity. Because, I mean, he was really good for UConn, so... I mean, it's not really that crazy. But, I, I, it sounds like Alex Sarr refuses to go number one, but I guess he wants to be uh, on the Wizards, maybe. But Klinger's really good. But the Hawks, if they could trade down if they want to. So, Jason Tatum's longtime trainer, Drew Hanlon had been in Greece training a, in quote, new client for most of the finals. I'll let you guess who that might be. He flew from Athens to Boston Monday morning to make game five. In quote, eyes emoji, eyes emoji, eyes emoji. And quote, Ramona Shelburne, VSPN. Oh, yeah, gonna be Thanassus. Welcome to Boston, Thanassus, onto Tacumpo. There have Thanassus. I wonder who, I don't, I don't know who she's talking about, honestly. I'm being real, I don't, I don't know who she's talking about. Um, Nate Robinson says that if he doesn't uh, receive a kidney soon, death is the next door he will walk through. Some days I didn't want to leave the house, I just didn't want to do dialysis no more. Some days I did want to be here and I do this until I find a kidney. Man, someone get this man a kidney. Thoughts with Nate Robinson. Man, somebody get this man a kidney. A kidney. Come on. Damn. 
It's all from NBA Central. There's another thing I want to mention uh, from Adrian Wojnarowski. Mr. Woj. Some more things. Uh, ESPN sources all NBA forward. Pascal Siakam intends to sign a new four-year, $189.5 million maximum contract to return to the Indian Pacers. Siakam, he plans to sign the deal once the league's free agency moratorium ends on July 6th. Not surprised at all. Um, they wouldn't have done that trade if they weren't going to re-sign him. He was probably their best player. Um, and He was definitely their best player in the playoffs to me. And you're not going to trade for somebody if, if you're for a player like that if you're not going to re-sign him. So. No surprise. He's averaged over like 20 points per game in each of the past five years. So no surprises. They had to bring him back. And they fit with each other well. I like the move. And after the January trade, they held confidence, like in the relationship with their agents, and trusted they he had sincere interest in staying long term. It's a good idea. So it's basically a 189.5 million max contract uh, for him to for him to stay. Uh, ESPN sources: Jeff Van Gundy, who spent the season as a senior consultant uh, for the NBA champion Boston Celtics, NBA champ now, Jeff Van Gundy. He has agreed to, on a deal to become the lead assistant on Ty Lue's Los Angeles Clippers coaching staff. I feel this could be a good move. Good for, good for Jeff to get back into coaching. Even though it's not as a head coach, he's still an assistant. And I've, I, 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 think he, I think he'll like being an assistant. Because I know he likes coaching. So, this could him well, but I don't know. But that's, I think it's a smart hire. I mean, that's really all the NBA news here to um, talk about. So, um, yeah, till next time, I have a lot. Peace.